Hey y'all and welcome back to season two of the Book of Brianna, a podcast. I am your host, Dr. Brianna Whiteside, and we are rolling straight through February. Y'all, we're talking about being unstoppable here. Don't you want to be unstoppable? Don't you know that you were created to dominate, which means that you were created. You are made up. Your DNA knows that you are supposed to rule and reign during your tenure here on earth right and my job this month is to help you dominate is to help you remember who you are is to help you level up 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 it's sorry it's to help you live beyond the boundaries that you may have placed on yourself it is just to help you live a better life because when one of us rises we should all rise and the kingdom of course is better for it so in today's video i want to talk about you we're going to talk about you and we're going to talk about confronting the bully in you yeah have you, have you ever considered yourself a, bu a bully have you ever considered that you may be the drama you may be the bully you may be the person who is the problem have you ever interrogated if you're bullying yourself into something or out of something yeah we're going to talk about confronting these bullies because generally we talk about confronting the external bullies which is necessary but we don't talk enough about confronting those internal bullies the bully that only we are aware of the bully that only we see and hear and live with that bully has to go if you want to dominate if you want to become unstoppable this year that bully has to go we need to cut it so i'm going to be looking at my notes because i got notes <laughs> i want to stay on track here so we're going to walk through confronting your internal bully because we don't need anything threatening you as you move forward in life and move forward in god and so the first thing this is you know i i, I came up with four characteristics of bullies that i want you to consider as we think about as you think about your relationship with yourself as you think about how you think about yourself things that you may say about yourself or even some of the actions let's think about four characteristics of a bully and if any of these characteristics resonate with you you have some work to do okay so the first characteristic of a bully is aggressive behavior aggressive behavior so bullies often exhibit aggressive behavior which can be physical verbal or relational they may use force threats or intimidation to assert dominance and control over others so First thing we know, bullies are generally aggressive and this can this can manifest in either physical, verbal or relational aggression. What do you say about yourself? What are the conversations that you have about yourself? Do you have self-deprecating thoughts? Do you talk bad about yourself? You know how people are like, "Oh my god, I'm so stupid." "Oh my god, I no, you're not so stupid. Even if it's a joke, oh my God, my dumb self. What, what, are, what are we doing here? Why, why are you doing that? You know what I mean? Like, it's not funny and it's not cute. Or even, you know, physical abuse. Physical abuse. Not taking care of your body. Not care, taking care of your health. All of these things encompass aggressive behavior. I'm not going to make it. I'm not good enough. I'm not going to be able to do this thing. I can't, I can't, I can't. And the truth is, whatever you say, you're right. If you say you can do something, you're right. If you say you can't do something, you're right. It's all up to you and your decision about it. And this behavior, this aggression, we have to check it. Because sometimes it's taught to us, right? We may have grown up in very difficult environments that may have communicated these types of things to us and about ourselves. And so naturally, we replicate these conversations. We regurgitate these conversations. We continue to have these types of conversations naturally, right? And we don't even realize it. It's just like, oh, it's just this thing I do. Why do you do that? Because you know this self-talk is also problematic. You know that you are giving heaven and earth license to bring things against you. And I'm not talking about heaven, God's kingdom. I'm talking about even the second heaven, the prince and the powers of the air. Your self-talk is given legal right 
for them to bully you because you already you 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 the bully first you you've begun the bull the bullying where does this come from why are you doing that and why do you believe what you believe about yourself why do you believe that you're unattractive why do you believe that no one would ever love you why do you believe that you would not you would never get married why do you believe that you're not good enough why do you believe that you can't pass that test you can't get this job you can't get this promotion all of this negative like tilting we do we do a lot of mental gymnastics and that is aggressive behavior towards you towards you so i want to ask you first and foremost are you the bully here are you bullying yourself and therefore you know victims of of bullying they generally end up with low self-esteem they generally go into shells and you know sometimes if it's not catch they end up you know taking their own lives unfortunately right bullying it's such a vicious thing especially when you're doing it to yourself when you're inflicting this level of self-harm on yourself day in and day out, could it be that you're bullying yourself, which is why you can't show up, which is why you can't advance, which is why you can't break out of this cycle? Could, could it be? I'm not saying it is, but I'm asking you, could it be a reason? Not because God said you couldn't, not because things, you know, you won't have any opportunities, but you have trained yourself not to recognize the opportunities. And even if they come, you'll say, oh, I'm not good enough. You'll say, oh, it'll never pan out. Oh, no, not me. I'm not worthy. Who said that? Why do you believe that? So we have to get this aggressive behavior in check. We have to. So do some introspection. Ask yourself, am I bullying myself? Am I talking aggressively against myself? Am I binding myself to a lower standard? Am I the drama? The second characteristic of a bully is repetitive, harmful actions. Repetitive, harmful actions. So this behavior is not isolated, but occurs consistently over time, creating a pattern of intimidation or abuse. Again, repetitive, harmful actions are not isolated events but they occur consistently that's your key word there consistently over time creating a pattern of intimidation and abuse what have you been rehearsing what have you been rehearsing over yourself for a long time all of these years you've been rehearsing what what do you say about yourself? Because your Bible tells you out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What are you rehearsing? What are you saying? What, what has become your reality? Because you've spoken it into existence. This is the practice of repetition. You learned this from somewhere. I'm reminded what's coming for me is when Adam, after he eats of the fruit, they realize they're naked and um, God, you know, they try to sow the fig leaves on them. And God says, Adam, where are you? And he's like, oh, I, 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 I was naked, I hid. And he said, who told you that? Who told you you were naked? This is what I need you to ask you. Who told you insert whatever negative thing that you may be rehearsing about yourself? Who told you that you're insignificant? Who told you that you're not good enough? Who told you that you're unlovable? Who told you that, you know, you're gonna always have to rob Peter to pay Paul? Who told you that? And why have you continued to rehearse it? Why are you nursing at the breast of this dysfunction? Who told you? And repeatedly, it's like a cycle. You continue to do it. You go around and around and around. And God's like, this wasn't the destiny for you, girl. These weren't my thoughts towards you are good and not evil. So why are your thoughts towards yourself evil? If I am your creator and I know your end and your beginning and I know everything you're going to do and I even know your thoughts before they are far off and my thoughts are still good towards you, why are your thoughts bad towards you? And why do you have a habit of consistently thinking ill about yourself? Well, what is this thing? Who told you that? This is you bullying yourself. 
to prove a point, bullying yourself, locking yourself down. Because granted, something may have happened to you. Someone may have said something about you that deeply scarred you. Yeah, all of that happened. Those were facts, but they're not the truth. The truth is that you can rise above it. The truth is that you have everything you need to rise above it if you decide to confront the bully you have to silence the bu bully and that means that you have to stop the repetitive harmful actions you have to stop that's it you have to decide enough and it may take you some time to recognize them because you may have been living in this cycle for a long time but once you make a decision to to stop and you start to catch it you'll get better but the cycle of the harmful, repetitive thoughts and self-talk and all of the things, it has to stop if you want to advance, if you want to go higher. The next characteristic of a bully is power and imbalance. And bullies typically exploit power to assert control, okay? This can manifest in various forms such as physical strength, social status or the other factors that give them an advantage over their targets so bullies typically exploit a power imbalance to exert control okay this is where you start to it becomes you versus you situation or even you versus god if you are bullying yourself and god's saying um okay this is what we're gonna do this is what i created you to for you for this is what i want you to do and you're like, I'm not going to do it because I'm incapable. I'm not good enough. I'm not all of these things. This is you trying to overpower God. What God said about you. You're trying to take control over the what? Narrative. If God is saying, all right, this is what's for you. And you saying, all right, this is not what's for me. Because you have the legal right to exercise your will in the earth because this is your life. You can stop the hand of God which is an act of bullying against yourself because you were created to desire and to fulfill the destiny that God has set before you. You are hardwired to it. Every cell in your body knows it. Everything knows it. But when you decide, I'm not going to do it, you're trying to exert control. You're trying to shift the power dynamics between you and God. And he's not going to fight you for too long on it. You know what I mean? Like, this is your life. This is your, these are your decisions. You get to decide how far you go. He may have available to you 50 things, but if you decide to only do 10, that's really on you because you, you're in a power struggle here, right? You're in a power struggle, but you have the, the legal right to be in that power struggle if you decide to. Now, it won't behoove you. It won't work out for you. You may not get everything you were created to be. And if I'm going to be on here walking through what I'm walking through, I'm getting everything I'm created to be. Give me my reward immediately. As soon as it's available, I want my stuff. Right. <laughs> and so when you are, when you have, when you are the bully, when you are the person who is working against yourself, it's a power imbalance. This is why the Bible also warns us to, uh, against being double-minded. When you're double-minded, what happens? You're unstable in all your ways. The power is going right to left, right to left, right to left. You're unstable. You can't move. You can't move forward. But it's not because you can't decide, right? It's not because you don't have the power to be decided or to be decisive. It's because there is a power imbalance here, right? You're trying to one up something. Sometimes it's one up God unknowingly. Sometimes it's one up yourself. It becomes a negative cycle that you have to get under control. Are you bullying yourself by trying to ex exert your control over God? Are you bullying yourself by locking your natural self down? And I'm not saying, you know, your natural human desires. I'm talking about who you were created to be, your spiritual self, your divine self. You are a partaker in the divine nature. That's what your Bible says. Are you locking what is supposed to be for you down because you are bullying yourself to stay small? Because you are, because your 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 higher self, the self that God created you to be, 
it, it naturally wants to rise. It naturally wants to advance. It naturally wants to do things that God created you to do. Your human self, your body, your flesh, your will, your emotions, not so much. They're questionable, right? We got to get this power and balance together because you can potentially be stagnating your life unnecessarily. You already have enough things working against you. Why are you working against yourself? We don't need that. We can't, we don't need you adding to the pot, right? Let's get this power and balance together. And the last thing that I want to talk about, which is a characteristic of a bully is lack of empathy, lack of empathy. And when we're thinking about the lack of empathy, bullies may be indifferent to the feelings and well-being of others showing little remorse for the distress they cause. This lack of empathy contributes to their willingness to harm others without considering the consequences. But what happens when this is you? What happens when you lack empathy for yourself? It turns into self-hatred. Turns into self-hatred. When you lack empathy for the human aspects of you, for the, 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 the aspects that make mistakes, when you lack empathy for that, it turns into self-hatred. That is anger turned inward. And so you, I hate myself. I hate this about my life. I hate this about myself. I don't like this about me. I don't like this. And that, this is not saying that the things that you don't like, you shouldn't like, right? If they are against God and against holiness and righteousness, of course you should dislike them and work your hardest and partner with God to come out of those things and to overcome those things. But what about these are just the human aspects of you, the human nature of you? What happens when you start to despise your own humanity? I had a, I had a season of my life when that was the truth for me. I hated my own humanity. I hated being human. I wouldn't make allowance for the mistakes. I wouldn't make allowance for feeling certain feelings. I lacked empathy for myself. You know how people say like, you are your worst critic? That's true of me. I used to be hypercritical of myself, trying to be perfect, and I found myself exhausted. That type of burden is exhausting, and it is not, you, you can't maintain that. You can't maintain that and maintain your sanity and your walk with God. You can't, and it took me a while to make, to make peace with my humanity, to make peace with the fact that I'm not going to be perfect. I can choose to be better every day, 1% better every day but I'm not going to be perfect every day. And I had to sit with the, with, with the truth of that. And I had to reconcile that, yo, you got to show yourself some empathy, Priyana. You, <laughs> you got to give yourself some grace, girl, because you ain't giving yourself no grace and you need to. Right. So, you know, when I learned that I too was a bully, a self bully, right? I was the drama. I bullied myself and I couldn't figure out why my emotions weren't regulated. I couldn't figure out why I didn't enjoy my life. I couldn't figure out any of these things until I realized you're the problem here, Brianna. You are working against yourself. And the crazy part is you don't even realize that you're doing it, but you're doing it. You are doing it. And the fruits of your life are showing the evidence of it. Right. I had to stop um, with the aggressive behavior. I had to stop with the repetitive, harmful acts. And this, the repetitive, harmful acts aren't just like that self-talk. It's the things that you do against yourself that the Bible considers harmful or sin. The things that you may do to your body, the, th the abuse, anything that is would consider abuse means that it is used abnormally. This is abnormal use. This is not what this thing was created for. And so if you're doing something against something that it wasn't created to do, or you're trying to force something to do something that it wasn't created to do, you are abusing it. You are abusing it. I had to get that power imbalance together because naturally I want to resist God in my flesh. I want to resist the things that he's telling me to do, but I had to get that together. And that was a lot of discipline. I'm still getting it together. I'm not perfect. I'm not there yet. And finally, empathy I had to come to peace with the fact you human girl. You are not a robot. You are not God. You are not Jesus the Christ. You are human. And you have to show yourself grace and empathy to grow. So I hope this is giving you something to think about. Are you the bully? 
are you the drama are you working against god and yourself if you are it's not too late to course correct that's the good thing you can course correct here it's available to you. You still have time. You haven't run out, but you have to decide to do it. I hope this has encouraged you to become unstoppable. My name is Dr. Brianna Whiteside, and thank you for tuning in to season two of the book of Brianna. If this has encouraged you, if it has inspired you to think differently, I want you to leave me a comment, like the video, and share it with a friend. Let's all become unstoppable in 2024. I'm committed to do my, doing my part, and I hope you are committed to doing your part. I'll see you soon in the next episode. Bye.